Good evening, everyone. Kabul Ta'af, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we're continuing with the tour in Gimel. Yeah, so it says like this. And some hina kadera be picat ets laha de heaven shehi laha, venera we are le saka, a sule tal tela. That's all shum davar. Aval yevesha shall we la saka muteret. The whole davar. Okay. So, way to translate this, what is he telling you here? That don't lean the pot, right, which is full of food on a piece of wood which is moist why is that because since it's um moist it's not really fitting for firewood uh so therefore you know you can't even carry it but if it's dry then right uh, it is allowed why is that because uh, it is fitting to be firewood so you know the rule is like this right that you you know you can't really Use moist wood for firewood because you know it won't it won't catch on fire, it won't burn good. That, that's you got you got to wait till it dries out, right? So that's why he's saying that. So let's look in a bit yourself and see. Explain right? Explains how he explains this. Today we don't have such a thing like this, you know. So whatever. Let's see what he says here, right? Um, so he says over there, right in Lamed Bet Amud Bet in Betza, he brings the source. Tanan learns the Mishnah. And some chinah to kederah be bikad perosh Rashi kasavar loni tenu etzim ela leasaka. Right. So he holds that wood was only allowed for firewood. The uh, Rabbi Shimon Matir, but Rabbi Shimon allows this. Uh, Rashi. Rashi explains the Rabbi Shimon Matir de let le mukze. Why? Because Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold by this kind of mukze. You know, he doesn't hold that it exists something like this. Right? And then the Amoraim also argued about this, right? Uh, what is the halacha? Bechizra, Klomar, Anaf, Etz. So they argued about what? Uh, like a, a wooden branch. Shehu Chad, which is like a sharp kekots, like a, you know, like a thorn, you know, very sharp. So, in other words, because it's so sharp, it is fitting for something, right? What can you do with it? You can use it as a skewer, you know, for your meat, right? Uh, so, you can like, you know, roast your meat like that, right? Uh, skewers are used until this day, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a useful thing sometimes, you know, to make a barbecue with skewers. Uh, so uh, that's that's what he's saying. Okay. Uh, 
So he says, right, that uh, So the conclusion the Gemara there is like this, that if it's dry, it's allowed. If it's moist, as we said, right, not allowed. Rashi. Rashi explains right? So Rashi explains, right, that that which the Talmud concluded that it's forbidden, that's only the ones, you know, according to the ones who hold that this is muktza. But he says, we don't hold that way, Rashi says. So we know, we're not really concerned about this. But comes the Rosh, right, and argues with this with Rashi. So he says, right, that Rav uh, Paskins, that we don't hold like that. Uh, and Rav Tam explains, the reason is because the Ensom Chin love Mishum Mukse, not because of Mukse, Ela Mishum Gezera Yom Tov. Right? It says it's because of Yom Tov. What does that mean? Atu Shabbat. If you come to do it on Yom Tov, you're going to come to do it also on Shabbat. So therefore, right, the rabbi said, you know, uh, refrain from this because of that. Kedemasik beperek kol akelim. That can include over there in the Gemara. Shabbat kuf chavdal lamud valuf umasik hatam de matnitin deacha bet shemai hi. Okay, so then it concludes. It concludes over there, right? That this Mishnah is bet shemai. Rabbi Shimon matir ke bet hilel. But Rabbi Shimon allows this according to bet hilel. Vehadi katan eshelo nitnu etzim ela yasaka. And now, which it says, right, that uh, wood is only is only allowed for uh, for firewood. What it means is like this: that on Shabbat you cannot use it for firewood. Obviously, right? You cannot uh, start a fire on Shabbat because Yom Tov atu Yom Shabbat. So we decreed Yom Tov because you may come to do it on Shabbat. Right. So it says the conclusion over there. Again, right. That if it's dry, it's allowed. If it's moist, it's not allowed. Kaima Shapir Moke Hatam Hachamatnitin Kebet Shamai. So he says that's according to Bet Shamai, the Mishnah, this Mishnah. They had the Asar Ativa Lav Mishum the Sabah Kebet Shamai. And now what he forbade the moist wood, it's not because he holds like Bet Shamai. So Loni Tnu Etzim El Alasaka, right? Um, that wood, uh, you know, was only uh, allowed because of because of uh, firewood. That's what Bet Shamai holds. So he says, but uh, Betilel says like this, right? That wherever it's fitting for firewood, it's also allowed for other purposes as well. But when it comes to moist wood, which is not really fitting for uh, right uh, for for firewood, so then that they forbade that all you know, like all you know, all the way through, right? Uh, all around. Not because it's Muktzeh, he says. The reason is because, you know, if you do it on Yom Tov, you may come to do it also on Shabbat. That's the end of it. Okay. Right, uh, that's, that, that's how the two Paskins, like the Rosh, whatever. Right? But this Rabbi Paskins like Rashi. So we have machloket right about this, you know, whether it's allowed to do this or not. So what's the machloket? The, ma the machloket is, is only dry wood allowed or also moist wood as well? Pretty much that's that's the machloket, right? Okay. So he goes on. Um, Right. So the riff says like this, right? That wood was only made for firewood, right? So therefore, we're not allowed to right uh, use it for these purposes. What are, what purposes are we talking about? To 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 lay right the uh, the pot on top of it that so you're cooking with that. So it says the Ran, the way you explain it is like this, the riff. That since they're only right, uh, since they're only meant for, for, for firewood, then Torah Kli alem, and therefore they're not really con considered to be a Kli utensil, Yeshlem Din 
מוקצה, מוקצה ייסס. לגבי שאר מלאכות, regarding other uh, labors, right? ומי הוא במידי דאי קטורת כלי עליהם, but he says something which is considered to be a utensil. שרי להשתמרו שב... you're allowed to use it, no problem. אפילו למלאכה, right, even for labor, שאין לו מיוחד דע, because it's not really um, designated for that. דה מסיקים בכלים, אף פי שאין מיוחדים להסקה. Why? Because the rule is that you're allowed to use, you know, uh, utensils as firewood, um, even though they're not designated for that. וסוגיין דה אחא מי חלפה בהדה סוגיין דה פרק כל הכלים. So it says this resembles, our case resembles, Another case in a different place in the Talmud. That over there it says that we don't uh, write, uh, use, uh, you know, lean, write these pots on top of the, like these, these wood, the wood, right? Uh, and there it says the reason is because right? that Yom Tov may lead to Shabbat. So in other words, we have here two, two different reasons, you know, some hold like this, some hold like that. Some say the reason is because you may come to do it on Shabbat. Well, some say the reason because it's muqtza. Okay. Um, so then we said, right, that really the halakha is not like this Mishnah. Why? Because it's like Bet Shemai, right? We don't pass like Bet Shemai. So, so he says that, uh, but they didn't mention the reason, right? Um, that wood is only for 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 firewood. And here, right? We didn't mention Bet Shemai. So he says here, you know, this is the main place for this topic. Right, uh, why is that? Because it's like its place over here, you know, it's the right place for it. So he says, therefore, we pass in like this Gemara, right, and not the one over there, right, the other place. <laughs> okay, so he says, right, the data Rambam kedata rif, right. So the Rambam he says holds like the rif. Shkatav. אין סמכין את הקדרה ולא את הדלת בבקעת של קורה שלא התירו לטלטל עצים ביום טוב אלא להסקה בלבד. So he holds like the riff. What is the riff? Right? That what? That, you know, wood was only allowed for firewood. That's it. Nothing else, right? עד כאן השנה, זה ינדבן. אוקיי. So then he continues. ולגבי חיזה כתב הריף כמסקנה דה עסיקנה so he says, right, that regarding, you know, uh, this Chizra, right? Mm. So the riff says that, you know, as we said, right, that if it's dry, it's allowed. If it's moist, it's not allowed. So he says, there's a wonder on this, you know, why? Since he passed like the opinion that says that wood is only given for firewood, only allowed for that purpose, Hechi Share Be'evisha. So then how, right, how is it allowed uh, to use dry? Right? To put it inside your, right, to use it as a skewer. But it's not going to, 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 to roast with it. But it says the one that uh, was forbade, The reason why he forbade was because they're only made for firewood. It says, so he says, therefore, right, the rule is like this, that uh, since wood is only used uh, for, for firewood, right, uh, even, though, even though that's the case, Right, uh, you're still allowed to, you know, use it as a skewer. Nevertheless, why is that? Because this kind of use, he says, resembles like firewood. You know, it's like similar. In other words, you're putting it on the fire, <laughs> basically, right? So it's kind of like similar, similar usage. Okay. Good. Mali litzlot be gachato. 
So he says, right, that, uh, and that's the reason we gave there, according to one who allows, right, what difference does it make if I, right, uh, you know, roast with it, or, right, if I, you know, uh, roast with its coals. So what does that mean? So since this usage, you know, of, of roasting meat, right, like that, and also, right, same thing. In other words, when he's using it as coals, he's also doing it to roast meat, right? So in other words, the usage is very similar, almost the same thing. So therefore, this usage, he says, resembles, uh, right, uh, you know, like, you know, using it as coals. So therefore, it's allowed. Using this firewood, right? Whatever. Okay, so interesting. Let's go on a little bit. So then he brings this case over here. Ve'aran katab says the ran ahad yamin on the tiva asul. That which we said, right? That the uh, the moist wood is forbidden. Lav le mimad der tiva asul, right? Le mitve be'esek gadol. Ah, so it doesn't mean that moist wood. You're not allowed to put it into a big fire. Interesting. So, right, so he says something interesting, right, that there is a way to use moist wood, you know, in a fire, which is what? If you use like a mixture, you know, of dry and moist wood, then, then it'll go. But if you use only moist wood, right, it will not go. So there is a way to use it. But he says, nevertheless, we don't say, right, that it's the same thing. You know, they can use it as a mixture, blah, blah, blah. You know, so therefore, right, we say that moist wood is not allowed. Even though there is a way to burn it, as we said, right? Okay, good. Uh, so that's the right, so therefore he rejects this, right? He says, no, he cannot do that. But uh, you, know, you can't say, oh, well, there's a way to do it. Yeah, there's a way, but, uh, you know, it itself, by itself, it doesn't work. Uh, okay, so then he goes on. Right? So he says, right, that the Rambam brings that a uh, twig, right, which is moist, he says it's mukse, right, as we said. Why is that? Because it's not fitting, you know, to, to burn with that, right? You can't use it as firewood. So therefore he says, you can't use it as a skewer either, you know, because of that. It's a muktzah, you know? So you can't make a skewer out of it. Right? So he also writes in a different place, in chapter four, that a woman should not go in, right, into, you know, like, a, a, you know, stick her hand into the bonfire, right, and take a piece of wood there, right, which is the wood that he, he uses for, for manipulating the fire, whatever, uh, and use that, you know, as a, as a skewer. You cannot do that, he says. Interesting. Um... Well, I didn't really say it right, right? What he's saying is like this, that he's saying a woman should not go into a pile of wood, right? Not a fire. We're talking like a pile of wood and take one twig out of there to use it, you know, uh, to, to, to roast with it, to use it as a skewer, in other words. She shouldn't do that. So what's the reason why? Because it's, you know, it's moist, right? I guess that's the reason. So he says, right? So this rabbi says, he says, we already explained in the second chapter, as we said, right? You cannot you cannot roast with the uh, with the uh, moist wood. But it says, you know, when it comes to dry, no problem, right? Dry wood is no problem. So, so he's telling you, right, again, the same thing over and over. Dry is no good. Dry is good. Moist is no good, right? For the same reason that we already mentioned. 
And then he says, also, Rashba says this, right? Uh, same thing, right? Okay, good. Okay, so says Bet Yosef, right? It seems to me, then so this is, you don't really need to right, uh, force yourself into this whole thing here. What does that mean? Right? So he says, really, the truth is, you know, what it's talking about there is not a moist piece of wood, he says. It's talking about a dry piece of wood. Ah, so if that's the case, right, why is it forbidden to use it to roast with it as a skewer? Right? So he says, um, So he says, right? So he says, um, right? So he says, uh, so he explains, right? The reason why you can't use it is not because it's moist. The reason is because it's not sharp, you know? So therefore, it's not really fitting to be a, a skewer. It's like, you know, got a thick kind of a, you know, it's thick, you know? So you can't really stick it in, into a piece of meat. You know, unless you shave it down, right? You can't do that on Yom Tov, you know? You can't shave it down to prepare it like that. So therefore, right, uh, that would be a problem. So therefore, this is that's the reason why you can't use it. Okay, interesting. <clears throat> Let's go on. So he says, um, well, if he said, lomar, tam arambam. According to this, he says you have to say that that which Rambam gave a reason, Sham, tiru that they didn't permit right to carry wood on Yom Tov, bilbal only for for. For firewood, so he says that's only that's only pertaining to the issue of putting the pot on top of it. So he says, but regarding the issue of using that uh, piece of wood, you know, that's for a different reason. He says the reason is because it's thick. So it's not the same thing as the case of the pot. That's what he's saying, right? Differentiating between this and that. Okay, so that's the end of the Bet Yosef. Let's see. That was a long one. Okay. Maybe we should have skipped it. You know, it's not really so practical, but whatever. I, I did it already, you know, so too late now. <laughs> too late to skip it. <laughs> okay. All right. I'd rather do more of the practical stuff, you know, things which are not practical. I mean, I don't, you know, what's the point, right? Ish shemeto, okay, one second, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it says here, right? So he says, don't lean, right? In other words, don't put it on top, or whatever, right? Uh, the, the pot, Right or, or a door he says right also right? on the bikat. Right, what is a bikat? It's a piece of wood basically. Right. Let me see what the Mishnah Bura here says. You know, maybe explains better what this is exactly. Well, basically, it's a piece of wood, right? Whatever, you know, chopped wood, right? Something like that, right? So, anyway, right? Uh, what is he thinking here? That you shouldn't lean it on, you know, put it on top of that, uh, you know, use it to, to lean it or whatever. Um, so, about mutar, um, but you're allowed to, he says, uh, the Rama says you're allowed to roast with it. So he brings that in the name of the riff, right? So we'll see how that fits in over here. So what's the reason why you can't right put this pot or this door, right, whatever, on top of this piece of wood to lean it on, you know, lean lean on it, whatever, right? The reason is because, as we said, it's moist, uh, and you know we only allow wood uh, which is fitting for you know firewood. Uh, so therefore, right, uh, this is not included in that. In that, uh, right, in that permission. That's exactly what we said. 
So Mishnah Bura, right? Just I just saw there. He says that, if it, but if it's dry, it's okay, right? We're talking about that it's moist. That's the reason why you can't do it. So the rule is like this, right? What do you see from here? At least we learned something, you know. Maybe maybe a little bit practical for us, a little bit, right? Whatever. That you know, if you're if you're dealing with wood, right? On uh, you know whatever in your backyard or whatever it is, right? I don't know what you're doing there. So it says right that the what? If you have moist wood, you cannot you cannot use that on Yom Tov, right? But dry wood, you're allowed to use. So you know what people do, right? In order to dry the wood, they put it in the sun. You know, the sun dries it. You know, like that's one way to do it. If you want to do it like relatively fast, that's what you do. So once it gets dry, then it's, you know, then it's okay. So, right. So the Ramah says, right, but you're allowed to roast with it, right? Right. Also, it says right that uh, you're allowed to um, use it as firewood with other wood, right? Uh, even though you can't use it by itself, right? But the truth is, it's very interesting uh, because in the Bet Yosef he didn't paskin like this, right? Uh, it seems like there's a machloket here because Bet Yosef didn't allow this uh, to use. Moist wood for any purpose, if I'm not mistaken, right? So let me see what the Mishnah Bura says here. Right, so interesting, right? Mishnah Brewer here right, explains it a little bit differently, right? He says that the Ramah is talking about dry wood. If that's the case, right, then it's very clear. It's, you, you know, we, we do pass like that, right? But it doesn't, you know, I mean, the Mishnah, the Ramah doesn't read that way, you know? It seems like he's talking about moist wood uh, because he doesn't say that it's dry. Interesting. Okay, so anyway, right? So Mishnah Bura Paskas is over here. You can only do that if it's dry. <clears throat> so I know, whatever, you know, I guess we, we should rely on that, right? In other words, uh, we, should, we should understand the Ramah that way. But the Ramah is talking about dry wood. <clears throat> Unless we can find some other sources that hold differently, right? Uh, whatever. But meanwhile, we'll stick with this one. Yeah. Until we get to the other ones, right? Whatever. But so, uh, right, so it seems like the Ramah is talking about dry wood. Then we understand, right? So he says, what's the reason that you're allowed to roast with it? Even though you're not using it as firewood, but he says it resembles the usage of firewood. That's what we said in the Bet Yosef, right? Same thing. So that fits in very well with the whole scheme here. Okay, good. That's good. Uh, and then he says, the kol sheken right? All the more so, he says, you can use it with other wood. But here's the thing, right? Now that he says this, right, you can use it with other wood, that already implies that he's talking about most moist wood, you know? So it's hard to understand why the Mishnah Brua understands this here as talking about dry wood. It seems like the Ramah is talking about moist wood. There's another Mishnah Brua here. I'm going to see what he says here. Let me just see what he, what he says. So it could be, you know, the Mishnah Brewer here is arguing with the Ramah. <laughs> He's not really explaining the Ramah. <laughs> More like arguing with it. Uh, so let's see, right, what he says here. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, it's, okay, that's a surprise. So Mishnah Brewer says something interesting, right? That he says the first part of the Ramah is talking about dry wood. And then the second part he says talking about moist wood. You know what I mean? Uh, it's really hard to, you know, to, uh, to, to, to understand that because, you know, the Ramah doesn't say these things. Okay, whatever, you know. Maybe you have to look more, you know, into the sources and see, right, uh, what's going on. But anyway, right, uh, the way the Mishnah Brewer explains it, 
is that moist you're not allowed to use. But right, he says that you know the Rama is allowing you to use it with other wood since it'll burn all together, you know, as, as a group, as a bundle, right? Whatever. Uh, okay, but the truth is, right, that the uh, Maran and Shulchanuk did not allow the, any of these things. He didn't, allow, he didn't allow to use moist wood for any purpose. You know what I mean? So that's very interesting. Okay, uh, so, right, uh, that's the story there. As we said, it's not really so practical, you know, whatever. Unless you have, like, a, you know, a backyard there, you know, with some, you know, chopping some wood. Whatever, right? In your in your house, to whatever, right? Uh, yeah. In the New York City, we're far from that, right? We're not really. <laughs> we we don't live that way. Right? So, yeah, so. We're not we're not into that stuff. Okay. Okay. Let's let's see if we can do another one. Right, so this this is something a little bit more practical, but let's see what it says, right? If it applies to our times. Okay. Yeah. So let's read the tour over here. It says the tour. Right, uh, um, right, it's interesting. So, right, this I don't think this, this applies today, by the way. But right, anyway, it's interesting. He says, right, that you shouldn't use on Yom Tov uh, a new clay utensil, you know, for cooking. Why is that? Because if it's new, the first time you use it hardens it, you know, so it makes it like ready for use, you know. It's like you're finishing the job of making this utensil. So therefore, right, says the tour, you shouldn't do that because you're you're like making a utensil like that. Okay, that's the language of the tour. So let's go to Bet Yosef. So it says Bet Yosef, right? Where is the source for this? Right over there in this Gemara. Right? Uh, Tanan, uh, same page, right, as before. We learn the Mishnah there. So, right, it says over there that we shouldn't, uh, right, uh, use these, um, plates, you know, whatever, to, to roast with them, right? Uh, because, so Gemara asks over there, right, why is that forbidden? What's the reason why? Right? Why is that forbidden? What's the reason why? Right, uh, so he says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Hacha Berafim Chadashim Askinan. He says we're talking about new ones, right? Mipne should tarich lebatkan. So you have to check them. Be'amer la mipne should tarich lechams lechasman. So some say it's because you have to write chasman, uh, whatever. We'll see what that means, right? So Rashi explains the Pesach Rashi tarich lebatkan im yochlu lekabel dibun. Right, first you have to check if it can if it can accept a fire, you know, without breakage, right? Whatever. That's one opinion, right? So that's why, according to the first opinion, right, it's because they, they may break. And it turns out, right, that he was exerting himself for nothing, that he got nothing done there. Some say because you write, what is, does it mean, chasman? So Rashi explains, right, that means it hardens it, right? The first time you use it, it gets hardened. He says, even though it's for the needs of Yom Tov, because right? we are using them to cook with that, right? Whatever, roast, roast with that. But since it becomes a utensil with this uh, right uh, usage, the first one, right? Uh, therefore, it's forbidden. But says afterwards, they bring in the Gemara, uh, the Tanya in the, in the bright side says, so it says right there that like this, one who brings the fire and one who brings the wood and one who brings and puts the pot on top, they're all liable, right, for you know the labor of, of, of cooking, whatever. 
So he says, I understand, because they're all doing something there, right? Physically, you know, actively, whatever. Um, but it says, but it says, when it comes to placing the pot, you know, what is he doing there, right? In other words, what's the labor that he's doing? So he says, we're talking about, he says, we're talking about a new uh, utensil, right? A uh, new pot. So the problem is, as we said, right, that you're you're hardening it, you know, so you're making it into a kli. You make it into a utensil. So the Rosh says, right, that from here it implies that the reason why we forbid this is because because you harden them, right, as we said, like we said regarding a new, a new pot. Right? So he says, this is one of the prohibited labors on Shabbat, right? Uh, to make a new utensil, you know? A person is liable to death on that, right? Can you imagine? Right? Uh, so it's, it's a heavy-duty thing, right? Okay, so, but he says, uh, you know, but the, the issue of, you know, having to check it, that would not be a prohibition of Right, it wouldn't be so severe, you know, like you're doing a forbidden labor. Mikan yesh So I said, from here you learn. Uh, that means you should not cook with like a new pot on Yom Tov, right? Why? Because you're hardening it, right? As we said. Right? But nowadays, by the way, this doesn't uh, doesn't hold, you know, this whole thing, right? Uh, they've already done the job, you know, in the factory, right? Everything that needs to be done. So when you use your pot the first time. You're not you're not preparing anything. Right? That's basically right. Uh, there's nothing to prepare there. It's ready to go as it is. So it says we see right that that's the case that you know you can't really use them with water. They don't hold water until you use them one time. The Gasina de Birushami, Birushami says it says Birushami says the Mod Katan. Right. So this rabbi permitted, right, um, that what? To be to bring a, a stove, a new stove, right, uh, from the craftsman in order to use it, right, on Yom Tov. But he says it was like sort of a you know pressing case, right? In other words, they had no other choice, right? Something like that, right? That's Yerushalmi. Okay, so about Tosfot, but he says Tosfot, right? What about Tosfot? Katav achad de bikdera chadasha askinan. He says we're talking about a new pot. Mishum libun reafim laguba. So it says because you know, as we said, right, you're hardening those plates. Ve'esh kizarim shelo levashel betchila bikdera rasha. He says some are also careful not to use a new pot, right? Ve'lo ve'lo he so. But he says this is not correct. Da'achad bikdera rikanit daz shayach ba libun reafim. So it says, because we're here we're talking about an empty pot, so then, you know, it's relevant to talk about the issue of, you know, hardening the plates. <coughs> the, uh, right, the, whatever they call those things. <coughs> that he, right, he, he places it before he brings the water. <coughs> but it says, when you're cooking food in there, <coughs> you're not really, you know, preparing, hardening those plates, right? The Samag Katub, it says in the Samag, Karasina Birushami, that we write, it says in Yushami, Rabbi Yuda, Barishmel Horad, the Midoha Klavi, Kira Hadasha, Betoman, the Shapota Lakadera, Biom Tov, Vieshot Sim, the Mod Mikan. So, as we said, right, this Yushami allows this, you know, in a pressing case, as we already mentioned. So, he brings this Yushami and he comments on that. He says like this, right, that some say that they want to learn from here. You're not allowed to cook in a new pot with Yom Tov. So therefore, what do you got to do? You got to put it before Yom Tov, right? To harden it one time on the fire, you know? And then it's ready to go for Yom Tov, right? But he says, you know, there's a difference between our pots, right? And uh, the stove, uh, not the same thing. Uh, 
לכתחילה, אבל צריך לטיטה על האש מיעלה ביום טוב, ולא מים. וכן כתב רבנו אבי עזרי, ואולי יש לחלק בין קדרה שלנו לקהילה. אז הוא אומר, הוא אומר את זה, נכון? אולי יש איזה דיפרנס בין הרפת והסטוב. והגאות בימון כתב בפרק ג' דברי הסמג, הוא מביא את המילים של הסמג, זה רבי, ואחר כך כתב, אמנם הרם היה מזהיר לבשל בכל קדרה החדשה. אבל הרם היה אומר, הוא אומר, הוא אומר, הוא אומר, הוא אומר, הוא אומר, מערב יום טוב, אני... אז הוא אומר לך לעשות את זה לפני יום טוב. אם רוצים לבשל בה ביום טוב, אם אתה רוצה לבשל ביום טוב לבשל ביום טוב. וכך כתב התוספות, זה מה שאתה רוצה לעשות, וכן נמצא בתוספות לרם. זה מה שאתה רוצה לעשות לרם. זה עשה אם לא דוחק, אלא זה כמו פרסינג קייס, כמו שאמרנו, זה מבין. כגון שאין לו מה יאכל. So what does it, what does it mean pressing case, right? What does it mean pressing? So it says it means you don't have what to eat, right? You don't have a meal. So you gotta, you know, cook up something, right? You got no choice. So then we allow it. That's what he's saying, right? וכן הרוקח, that's what the רוקח says also, על כן השנות. אוקיי, ורבנו ירוחם כתב כדי לחדשה לבשל בה, ביום טוב כתבו התוספות שאסור. So this rabbi says, right? תוספות says it's forbidden to do this. ודקדקו כן מדי אסור ללבן ולאפים. And they learn that from the Talmud, right, which talks about hardening those plates, right, those whatever, tiles, right? Tiles is a better word, not plates, right? Whatever, okay, good. Tiles. Okay. כמו כן, הגדרה, same thing also applies to the party, says, אין, אין, גמר תיקונם עד שיבשלו בה פעם אחת. So it says they're not really ready for usage until you cooked with it one time, you know? That's the hardening, right, uh, stage. פעם אחת, שאז מתחזקת ונזנק את הארד, ונראה בדקדלות שלנו שכל תיקון וגמר שנתן היא, בבישולן, בתנור של יוצרים, שאינו אסור, וכן אמה דבר. אז הוא אומר, הוא אומר, אנחנו אוהבים, אה, אז עכשיו הוא אומר, אנחנו אוהבים, 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 Why is that? Because our parts don't get hardened this way. All the more so, by the way, our parts, you know, because our parts, right, as we said, right, there's no, there's no preparation of a pot, you know, by using it one time. No such a thing like that in our times. So obviously, right, uh, this is not relevant, uh, you know, in our times. So says Bet Yosef, right, this is the custom, you know, to be lenient. In our times, right? Uh, so we never saw anybody who's stringent about this. You know what I mean? Now, in our times. As we said, right? Uh, our parts are different. They're not the same. So we don't have this, you know, this doesn't exist by us, basically, right? It's a piece of history, you know, whatever. <laughs> But, you know, it's more than history. It's Torah, you know what I mean? So it's still good to learn Torah, even though it's not so relevant, you know, but it's still good. But I'd rather learn more practical things, but, you know, whatever, right? We'll do the best we can. Okay, let's see Shulchan Aruch, right? And we'll finish it off. The end of the chapter also. Okay. Right, so it says Shulchan Aruch, Lididan mutal lebashel b'kidera chadashot, right, b'yom tov. For us, right, you're allowed to use new pots, right, no, no problem with that, as we said, right? Because, uh, you know, there's no preparation done by that, there's no, you know, whatever. It's already done as it is, right? You're buying it, it's all ready made, ready to go, right? There's no, right? Uh, uh, so it says the Ramah here, v'yesh osrim, as some forbid, he says. Interesting, right? So there is also another opinion, you know, uh, So he brings here the source as the Rosh and the Tur, you know? So he says, the customer should be stringent about this. If not, he says it's a pressing case, as we say, right? So he says, therefore, the custom by us is like this, right? He says, the, the Ramah, that, you know, we, we use it one time before Yom Tov, right? When we buy new pots for Pesach. 
So as we said, right, even though the Ramah says that, you know, they're stringent about this, but in our times, I think really there's really no reason to be stringent, you know what I mean? Uh, because our pots are like totally different. Because their pots, you know, what were they talking about? They're talking about clay pots, you know, uh, which had, you know, issues. What was the issue, by the way, with the clay pot? It was still, you know, very soft until you use it one time. So the problem was, you know, that uh, it, it would like leak water, you know, if before you, <laughs> if you didn't harden it, it would leak, you know. So that's why they had to, you know, that's what they, they had to, that's what they had to prepare like that. So in our times, you know, we're using metal, so it's really not relevant at all, right? There's no, or glass, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, but the stuff that we use doesn't leak, you know, whatever, doesn't need to be prepared. So therefore, obviously, right, the Ramah doesn't apply in our times, you know. That's that's very clear. Uh, so therefore, right, uh, don't worry about that. Right? Uh, go purchase new pots, you know, and uh, right, uh, use them as much as you want, whatever, right? Just make sure you put them into the mikveh that you have to do, right? Besides that, you're good. You're good to go, right? By the way, does clay have to go into the mikveh? Oh, I'm just seeing you guys now, right? Does a clay pot have to go into the mikveh? No. That's it, right? Uh, you know. So there's only two things that go into the mikveh, right? Metal and glass. That's it, right? No, nothing else. Everything else, don't waste your time. You know what I mean? You got better things to do. <laughs> what is what is the role in electronics like a like a toaster or something is there a way to right that's a good question yeah so you know uh i, I think i posted about this already i'm sure i posted about this uh because people asked somebody just asked me recently you know he bought like a, some kind of a you know electric device whatever uh so the rule is like this you know that um that people have found different solutions for this problem some people you know like they try their luck you know what i mean like you know they just like immerse it into water and let it dry for a few days and hope for the best. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it doesn't work out for the best, you know, this the solution, you know what I mean? It doesn't always work. Sometimes you wind up like ruining the utensil, you know? But, uh, so that's not a good idea. Uh, so, you know, you know, whatever. I would, I don't, re I don't recommend it. Uh, so there's also two other things, you know, which are possible, or maybe three things, right? There are some who, you know, will like lend it to a goy, you know, not lend it, but give it to a goy as a gift and then borrow it from him, you know. So therefore, it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to the goy. So it doesn't need to be immersed, right? That's also a solution which is brought down in the Shulchan Ruch, right? Especially as a temporary solution, you know what I mean? Until you can, until you can do something better. But in this case, there may be nothing better to do, <laughs> whatever. So that may be the only thing. You know. So right, uh, that's the one thing you can do. There's also some people, you know what they do? They take the utensil apart, you know, and put it back together. So why is that, right? Why is that Why is that significant? Because, you know, they say, well, you know, I made the utensil, right? Not the goy, I made it, right? I took it apart until it wasn't functional, you know? I put it back together. So I made the kli, right? Not the, not the goy. So it wasn't made by a goy, right? That's another, another thing, right? Some people do that. I've seen somebody who actually did this. In Israel, you know, in Israel, everybody's a, everybody's a handyman, you know. So they they all know how to play with things, you know, utensils. They know how to play with stuff. They're very good at those things, you know. In Israel, right? They know. Every everybody's handy over there. So that's another thing, right? But the truth is, right, that there's even a more simpler solution, because there are some poskim who hold that anything which is attached to the to the to the wall, you know, is not liable for 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 right to, for. Going into the mikveh, it's not obligated to go into the mikveh, right? So since you know we plug them into the wall, right into the right uh, socket, so therefore they say it doesn't really need to be immersed. This kind of utensil, right, which gets plugged into the gets plugged in. So what does that mean? When you're using the utensil, it's plugged in. You know what I mean? If that's the case, so then it's you know it's you don't. According to that opinion, you don't need to immerse it at all. So I gave you some solutions, right? Whichever one fits you better. I don't know. <laughs> some people like to do a double, you know, like, you know, just to be on the safe side. They do two two solutions, you know. Whatever, right? Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. <laughs> Great solutions. I like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. But the truth is, you know, that uh, people who are not so handy, you know, whatever, I just tell them, you know, just don't don't immerse it. 
you know, they, they don't know how to do all those things, right? That we spoke, we spoke about. I told them, I said, you know, just do me a favor, just leave it, plug it into the wall, and just use it. Because you know it's attached to the ground, it's attached to the wall, so it doesn't need to be immersed, you know. Whatever, so you can rely on that, you know. If you got I no got, other choice, I got an air fryer, and there's a part to the air fryer that gets plugged into the wall, and then there's a part that like comes out. It's like a tray that comes out. Can I just immerse the tray, or will that count? Or so, what question? what does it come out for? That's the question. It, that's where you put the food. Right, but when you when it's in use, it's plugged in, right? So, on camera. You know what I mean? All right, am I on? Um, let's see where I am. Okay, so this is the tray. There's a tray here. Back wedding tray here, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, okay. The food is in there. Yeah. And then goes into into that. So that's all electronic. I can't immerse that. But I can immerse the tray. So do I just immerse this, or do I not? Where does the food go? The, the food goes into the tray only. Food's in here, right? And then this plugs yeah. in this. So the food doesn't go into the into the other part, right? It, the whole thing the whole thing goes in there to cook. Right, but the food goes into the tray only. Correct. Yeah. So therefore you should yeah, you should immerse the tray. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, so immersing the tray will be enough? Of course, because only where the food touches you need, right? That's it. Excellent. Okay. I will do that. God bless. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow, Shem. Thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. They killed a lot more Nazis. I heard like some good stories. You know, two hundred Nazis they killed. You know, on just the last two days, right? On, and, on, and, on Independence and Day and on Yoma, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> you saw the uh, the UN um, updated the 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 Gazans that were killed. They were up to thirty five thousand. Now they're down to twenty five thousand, and they like all right, down. whatever. You know, let them play <laughs> around. You know, what I mean, as long as we kill the Nazis, you know, that's the most important thing. I just think you know, it's interesting. I'm talking, I'm talking about the soldiers, you know what I mean? The soldiers, they're right, the ones right, who are... Right. Well, they had, they had, I guess it's like half as many women and children are, are there reporting now. It's like crazy. Well, the truth is, you know, they're all Nazis because they're all, in, you know, indoctrinated into that, you know, into that lifestyle. But but at least, you know, we got to kill the, the, the armed Nazis, you know what I mean? The ones who are armed, you know? <laughs> at least we got to take care of them. Okay, anyway, I'm not a politician, but, you know, I'll let you know when I'm running for prime minister. I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night.